Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here then welcome. My name is Rachel and I am a disruptor in the accounting industry. I'm disrupting what it means to be an accountant, what it feels like to have an accountant, and showing you the behind the scenes of what running an accountancy practice really looks like. In today's video I'm talking all about the construction industry scheme, also known as CIS. Today I'm going to run through how CIS is handled for sole traders and limited companies, how much CIS deductions need to be, and worked examples of CIS for you in different scenarios. So let's kick things off and talk about what is CIS. So if you work as a contractor or subcontractor in the construction industry, you'll need to be aware of something called the construction industry scheme. The scheme allows for tax on a subcontractor's pay to be deducted at source by a contractor in a supply chain and then submit Submitted directly to HMRC. These deductions count as advanced payments towards the subcontractor's tax and national insurance contributions. So if you are a contractor and making deductions from your subcontractors, you must register with HMRC for the scheme. As a subcontractor, you don't have to register, but deductions might be made from your income at a higher rate if you aren't registered. CIS does not apply to payments made to employees who pay tax using HMRC's PAYE system. If that sounds complex, just compare this to being on payroll. You make an income and a percentage of that income is deducted at source by your employer. With CIS, you are self-employed or a limited company and a percentage of your income is deducted by your customer and then kept on account with HMRC to be offset against future taxes. So next up I wanted to talk about the work covered by CIS. So CIS covers most construction work to a permanent or temporary building or structure, civil engineering work like roads and bridges, and for the purpose of CIS, construction work includes preparing the site, so laying foundations and providing access works, demolition, dismantling, building work, alterations, repairs, decorating, installing systems for heating, lighting, power, water and ventilation, and then also cleaning the inside of businesses after construction work. Next up, we're going to talk about how much is CIS. So contractors registered under the CIS scheme are required to deduct the following taxes from their payments to subcontractors. So it's 20% deduction if the subcontractor is registered for CIS, or a 30% deduction if the subcontractor isn't registered for CIS. These deductions are paid by the contractor to HMRC as an advance towards the subcontractor's tax liabilities. Alternatively, if the subcontractor can actually apply for gross payment status, and this means that contractors will pay you or your limited company in full without making any deductions. If you're a CIS subcontractor working through your limited company, any CIS deductions made by a contractor from income due to the company can actually be offset against the company's corporation tax liability or refunded directly to the subcontractor by HMRC at the end of the year. The position is the same if you're a sole trader, but in this situation, any CIS deductions taken from you as a subcontractor are actually offset against your personal tax liability and will be picked up in your annual self-assessment. So, it can feel a little bit complex, so I'm just going to run through some examples to help you understand the different ways we treat CIS in different situations. So, first up, let's look at CIS where your limited company, or you as a sole trader, is the subcontractor only. So you work for a contractor who pays you or your limited company as a CIS subcontractor and deducts either 20 or 30% for CIS payments depending on whether or not you are registered. You or your company does not employ any subcontractors as part of this arrangement. So the main contractor must file a monthly submission to HMRC showing the deductions made from all of its subcontractors including you or your limited company and then for limited companies, your limited company will then include the CIS amount deducted by the contractor through an employment payment submission, otherwise known as an EPS. Your company must then submit an EPS to HMRC throughout the tax year as part of its PAYE arrangements. Once the tax year has then ended and the final payroll submission, otherwise known as an FPS, has been made, then your limited company can complete an online form using your government gateway account. HMRC will then use the total amount of CIS deductions made by the contractors that you've worked with to reduce your company's corporation tax liability by exactly the same amount. If there's any CIS credit left over, this will then be refunded directly to you or your company. For sole traders, 
If you're a sole trader, then you should include the CIS amount deducted by the contractors throughout the year in your annual self-assessment, and this will then also reduce your personal tax bill. Again, if there's any CIS credit left over, this will be refunded to you. Okay, next up, I'm gonna talk about your limited company is paying subcontractors. So your limited company is paying subcontractors to do some work for you. None of the work is for another contractor. Your company must complete a monthly report to HMRC providing certain information, including the amount of CIS deducted from your contractors. The report needs to be made for all individuals and businesses you employ as CIS subcontractors. Your limited company pays all of the deductions made over to HMRC in the same way as other PAYE taxes are paid. The next example is where you employ subcontractors, but you are a sole trader. So you work as a sole trader, but on some or all of your jobs, you pay subcontractors to do some work. None of the work is for another contractor. Even though you don't need to run payroll to pay yourself as a sole trader, if you pay subcontractors, you will need to run a CIS payroll for them and complete a monthly report to HMRC providing certain information, including the amount of CIS deducted from your subcontractors. The report needs to be made for all individuals and businesses that you employ as CIS subcontractors, and you will need to pay all of the deductions made to HMRC in the same way that other POAE taxes are paid. The next example is where you or your limited company is working for a contractor and you are also paying subcontractors. So if you or your limited company provides services to a contractor and also uses subcontractors, in this situation, you'll need to combine the two previous scenarios. So the contractor will make the necessary CIS deductions from its payments to your limited company, and then your limited company will make the necessary CIS deductions from payments it makes to its subcontractors. The amount your limited company is due from or is due to pay HMRC will be the difference between those two amounts. If you're operating as a sole trader, then the situation is exactly the same, but as in the previous points, you'll then need to make sure that you operate CIS payroll for any of your subcontractors. So my final point is just to very briefly cover the VAT reverse charge that relates to CIS. So on the 1st of March, 2021, VAT reverse charge rules were introduced. These rules changed the way that VAT registered businesses that are also registered under CIS present their invoices. If you'd like to learn more about the VAT reverse charge and the impact it might have on you, then you can check out the video that's up on the screen now to learn all about the VAT reverse charge in the construction sector. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you have learned lots about CIS. Let me know in the comments if this video helped you because I always, always love to see it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you get a notification every time I release another juicy video like this one. Thank you so much and I hope to see you again very soon.